On this episode of Andy's Auto Sport TV, we're going to talk about the different types of superchargers and how to choose the right one for your car. Now, before we get into the different types of superchargers, let's talk about what they do. A supercharger basically forces air into your naturally aspirated engine. A naturally aspiration means uh, if you have a 300 cubic inch engine, it can breathe in 300 cubic inches of air and turn that into power per revolution or per complete cycle. A supercharger forces more air in than what it's capable of. Every 14.7 pounds of boost that you put on your engine will basically double the amount of air that your engine takes in naturally. So you're going to make a, a 300 cubic inch engine is going to basically take in about 600 cubic inches of air at 14.7 pounds of boost. Now they all do it uh, a little differently, but they're all belt driven, which means they're mechanical and they go off engine RPM. Okay, there are basically three different types of belt driven superchargers. You have a root style, which has been around for a long time. You have centrifugal superchargers and then the new screw compressors. Now let's go into the pros and cons of each. Okay, now the first supercharger we're going to talk about is the root style. Now the root style supercharging has been around for a long time. Uh, started out basically on two stroke diesels. Uh, it's the only way they could get enough air into the engine in order to make those diesels make enough power. Also in World War I, they actually put them on aircraft. The higher you get in the atmosphere, the less air there actually is for the engine to make power. So they would use a root style supercharger in order to force air into the engine so they could get higher altitudes and make enough horsepower to get the airplane up there. Now in the car world, uh, we've been using these for quite some time since probably the mid 20s. And these do a great job. A couple great things about them is they are really good at bottom end horsepower. They make quite a bit really quickly. So they really spool up faster or make power quicker than any. However, they do take quite a bit more horsepower to operate once you get into the higher boost levels and because of the way they're designed, it's not very practical to intercool them. A root style supercharger has two rotors inside that uh, don't really have real high tolerances. So what this means is as you're creating boost, either the air bypasses around the rotors, keeping that heat inside the supercharger or in order to make it more efficient, they actually put nylon strips in there. The nylon strips actually touch and rub up against each rotor and also rub up against the outside of the case, making it more efficient, but also generating heat. This can create some problems. Now, it will give you a much greater boost level and, and quick boosting down low, but the higher you go on your boost levels, the more heat they generate. Now the next type of supercharger we're going to talk about is a centrifugal supercharger. Now these have been around for a long time and they have a couple of advantages over the root style or the screw compressor. Now one of those advantages is they actually mount usually to the front of the engine uh, on a bracket system. They also have piping that goes from the uh, outlet of the supercharger into either your carburetor uh, bonnet or into your throttle body. This allows you to be able to run that piping anywhere you want and be able to add an intercooler very easily. Now another advantage is they have an internal gear ratio which means and now this is not changeable it's static and it's set that way but what happens is the internal ratio of this supercharger is about uh, uh, 4.4 to 1 which means every time the outside shaft turns one time the inside turns 4.4 to 1 times. Now what this does is this allows you to create boost kind of like a turbocharger but it's still based on gears. It's very efficient and creates a lot less heat than the root style supercharger. Now a centrifugal supercharger kind of looks like a turbocharger because basically the cold side of the supercharger is that. It has an impeller on it that is gear driven. So basically every time you spin the shaft one time, the impeller on the supercharger spins three, four, five, six times depending on the internal gear ratio. Now this is where you lose a little bit on the bottom end, but when you get these babies spinning, they can make some great power. Now the last type of supercharger we're going to talk about is a screw compressor. Now it's similar in design to the root supercharger in that it has two rotors, but that's really where the similarities end. The rotors are designed significantly differently than the root style. The root style, they don't have a lot of pitch on them. The rotors actually have seals on them that actually touch the side of the case where the a uh, screw compressor, like this example from Sprintex, does not do that. The rotors have a lot more pitch on them and they basically draw air in from the back or the front and then force it down through the side. 
They are very, very quick to spool, so they, you'll have a good, good bottom end horsepower and torque. And then as the boost rises, they still do a very good job. However, one of the disadvantages that they have is they're a little hard to intercool because they mount similar to the root style supercharger. Now, as you can see on the screw compressor, the rotors are considerably different than they are on the roots, and it operates differently. A root style blower actually brings air in from the top, draws it down and pushes it on the bottom. A screw compressor is going to bring it in from one end, actually draw it in, and then force it to the front and run it out of these, this uh, bottom piece right here, the outlet. Now, the tolerances are very tight, so air does not bypass inside this supercharger, and because the rotors don't touch, doesn't generate any heat. The only heat you're going to get out of a uh, screw compressor is the heat that's generated by creating pressure. So let's summarize the differences in superchargers. Now we have our root style supercharger that still offers an old school style carbureted draw through type system or you can get what we have here from TRD. This will give you good bottom end horsepower. You don't want to make a lot of boost with it because it starts to generate some heat. Examples of these are from TRD, uh, Holly, Wind and Edelbrock. Now the centrifugal supercharger has a couple of advantages in that it mounts to the front of the engine on brackets so it can mount on either the driver's side or passenger side. Usually you can get your hood closed with it. Another advantage of course since it has a discharge style tube that goes to either your throttle body or a carburetor blow through bonnet, you can actually run that through an intercooler first and get rid of the heat that's generated when you make boost. Another thing, usually very easy to install. Popular brands of centrifugal superchargers include Paxton, Vortec, and of course Procharger. Then we have the screw compressor. Now this by far has the best volumetric efficiency of all three. They are very, very efficient down low. You're going to make really good horsepower. They spool up very, very quickly. And unlike the root supercharger, doesn't create heat problems as you get into higher boost levels. The one disadvantage of the uh, screw compressor is it's not very easily intercooled. Great examples of a screw compressor are Whipple and of course Sprintex. So whether you've got an off-road vehicle, a modern muscle car, an old school hot rod, or an import, chances are we've got a supercharger that'll fit your vehicle. Check out the link below to see what we have available. If you have any questions, feel free to call one of our knowledgeable sales staff at 1-800-419-1152 or email us at info at andysautosport.com. We hope you've learned something today and we'll see you on another episode of Andy's Autosport TV.